So let me log into the another Jenkins server. So here the prerequisite what was we install uh, helm that is available MBN is configured the environment variable cells has been configured and uh, the docker software okay and the docker is also installed okay this is what we configured in the previous session but I'm using the different Jenkins server but same purpose okay only thing is now what I need to do um, inside the Jenkins server so here in the present working directory I created a directory called dot cube already this is the one and uh, inside that we have some different cluster uh, configuration okay this is a different cluster configuration I'll what I'll do cp p config config old or let me move it to some other location maybe in the temp okay there is no config file now so what I'm going to do I will uh, this is a cluster and uh, here this Jenkins server first of all I need to um, enable password based authentication in this machine so that from Google Cloud I can do SCP and copy the config file here right mm. vi etc ssh ssh underscore in this file I am enabling password based authentication here service SST restart <coughs> <Okay. coughs> now password ec2 if a user give some password I'm giving a password okay now what is the IP of this machine this is the IP and here scp config which file you want to copy that file name and uh, easy to user and the ip i'm giving the default home location of the ec2 user because already in the temp we just now we moved some config file so again i don't want this file also should be copied there and it should be overwritten that's why I'm storing in a different location home easy to user previously we moved it to the temp when we discussed it on Friday so now I'm not using temp location because already the internal config file I moved yes you password okay copied we want to see here uh, CD home easy to if an user the config file is available okay now cpf and p this i'm moving into the var lib jenkins dot q here i'm moving okay cpf and p yep uh, so uh, you gave some password here okay right mm. so what was that password because actually when we create a ec2 instance we use key pair in linux machine mm. what what password because we don't set any password what password did you give you can give any password for each user it's up to you you can give your name anything 
no here at this i mean here in the back screen so you gave some password so where you had already set that password or or uh, it's a random one where in google cloud yeah 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 so here here yes just now i shown you right here i created a password for easy to user this is a okay. command okay after okay. editing this file okay after allowing uh, authentication for uh, through password based authentication then you can change the password with password command because okay, okay. Okay. i don't know what was the default password for easy to user right they are giving the key so that's why with the root i reset the password password easy to user then i gave some password here and the same password i was using here okay got it okay thanks guys so now once the file has been copied then that file has been placed under varlib jenkins okay so now um, but this file should be ch own um, jenkins jenkins owner should be the jenkins only right but by default this file is having a owner is ec to user varlib jenkins and uh, dot cube config and better change it to full permission ch more 777 to this file okay so now config file has been copied from google cloud to jenkins server and placed under the jenkins home directory now the final step what we need to do uh, what we have done in the previous session because uh, here if you see kubectl get parts hyphen n cube hyphen system you can't see anything over here that tiller component is not available because it's a new cluster i thought why unnecessary it should uh, run for two days so that they are deleted the cluster again it created a new cluster only thing is Again, we need to create a tiller component here. So for that, that command need to be executed. I'll show you. The repository docs Jenkins setup with help. This is a command. Okay, but before that, we need to execute these two commands also. Why? Because this is a new cluster. So in the cluster we need to create service account and cluster role so these two we need to create once again if you are following the continuation practice then uh, you can ignore this because i deleted and again i recreated that's the reason i'm recreating this one Okay, tiller service account has been created and now cluster role cluster role binding is also created as, as i said these are giving permission to tiller that it's like a root privileges for tiller on the kubernetes cluster because whenever helm is telling something to do then it's tiller will take care of whatever helm is giving the information and tiller will deploy or whatever delete or create anything everything it will do so it should have authority to do it on the cluster and uh, this one here on the google cloud console just you need to use control c control v okay so don't try try to right click and paste it just use control v here it's created now once it is done then this command need to be executed on jenkins so please read this description when you're doing anything this two should be executed on master means cluster and uh, this will be on the jenkins server now the copy we have copied this file already now we need to run this on the jenkins server helm version okay it is not showing for uh, cluster okay we need to log in as a jenkins sui fund jenkins helm version 
okay for server it is not getting because it's not connected to any server so once we enable communication then only it will be able to communicate so now it should create a tiller component okay helm is it because this was already using with some other uh, cluster Praveen, uh, did initialization fail here? Yes, because already there is was uh, it was connected to some different cluster previously, so that's why I'm resetting it. So that's why I use this Helm reset type one and force. So just waiting for the output to come. Okay, okay.
it's not trying to reach this one google cloud Did you log into Google Cloud and uh, check the cluster is up and running? Yes. Mm. From there itself, we copied. Uh, yeah, yeah. Got it. This one. Yes. It's created, but not able to reach Google Cloud. And it's saying no such file or directory. Spaces. Access token command cloud config config per I think there is a problem with the config file. Here it is showing, um, again it is showing 35 IP. Somewhat it was showing 34 IP range. Here it is showing 34 and here it's showing 35. Okay. Is it showing two IPs? Okay, so we are connected to this cloud shell, right? So cloud shell config file is storing two clusters. So previously, which I created, this is that cluster information, and this is the present cluster information. But when I copied this config file, so which it contains two cluster config files, because where I'm trying to create this one, this is a cloud shell here, it's a local. So here in this config file, it's appended the current config file also. So which contains two config files. So what it is doing when we copied this to the Jenkins server, it is trying to reach the older one also, which is showing now when I'm trying to reach uh, Helm version. 
see i think it is getting some problem so now what i need to do i'll do one thing but even though if contents do it try to connect the first one itself it should not give any problem why it is giving problem now it contains only information about one let me see if this works but it should work even though if it contains both the information because whichever is on the top in the config file it will connect to that particular cluster again i am copying into the jenkins server ch uh, mode 777 so <laughs> move it to the var lib jenkins hmm yes okay now it's showing only single cluster information let me see what is error if i do executing access token command okay hello
Okay, sorry guys, uh, there was a power lost, so again it came back. So I'm just going through. So the whatever the command uh, which we are trying to execute on uh, this cluster, so maybe it might not providing the. This one cluster I can see project. Maybe so I'll check it later, but anyhow, uh, to discuss about the CA job as of now, we don't require cluster because uh, right now we are trying to do the continuous integration okay so integration part so for that we need to have the jenkins server so what i'm going to do i'll uh, first of all i log into this i mean i will open the dashboard of this jenkins guys can you able to hear me right yes you are good yes, yeah. yep okay so so let me log into the jenkins server Okay, so as I said, so we prepared uh, everything. So let me discuss. So now, whatever we discussed till now, we discussed about the Kubernetes components, different components which we use in the real time. And the main purpose of the Kubernetes is to deploy the applications in case if it are the microservices then we can deploy it on the kubernetes right so here how we are going to deploy that is very very important we discussed individual uh, resources of the kubernetes but now we are going to talk about how we are going to deploy in the real time if we are a devops engineer or we got an opportunity to work on the kubernetes maybe we started uh, migrating our applications from virtual machines to um, kubernetes cluster see if they are running our virtual machines obviously they are like monolithic applications so when they are trying to migrate it on docker kubernetes then they might be converted that code into some microservice why because the complete legacy application will not be deployed onto the kubernetes cluster then there is no use right so when you are dividing into the microservices, then only you are going to get a lot of benefits if you are deploying it on the cluster, Kubernetes cluster. Because uh, each individual microservice you are going to deploy, upgrade, everything, lot of benefits are available, auto scale, right? So now, how it is possible? So whenever, as I said, if we, if we have 15, uh, assume 15 microservices for your application, which Previously, it was maybe one or two virtual machines it was running. Now, it, when it converted into microservice, in real time, it will be huge. Maybe 50, 100 microservices also will be there to run your application. Now, for every microservice, you have an so, uh, repo. Right? Repos will be there. Every repo will be there. And these repos will be available in all the, all the branch. All the branches in the sense, master branch, develop branch, release branch. Right? So different branches. I hope you guys are aware about the branching strategy. So based on that, each branch is for different environment, so testing environment, staging environment, uh, pre-prod environment, and uh, the release will be the release, uh, the production environment. This way we can have. So whenever the developers are writing the code, so we'll take one example, one branch, okay, whatever it may be. So if you are taking one branch, So this is an SCM source code management. It can be anything. It can be Bitbucket or it can be GitHub or it can be anything. Now, <coughs> developers, what they'll do, they will uh, write the code and whenever they check in, code check in happens, then immediately it will, Jenkins will pick up it. So what Jenkins will do? Jenkins will do the integration part. So we are taking the example here is Java applications. 
okay so when java application we are taking it should be maven build tool should be there so inside this we already configured a prerequisite sites maven is already installed for build tool so so that what it will do it will integrate the application it will create an artifact it will do the test cases it will build and will create an artifact whether it's a jar file or var file or it's an ear file depends upon the application maven will do that okay once it is done now in this kubernetes environment what we are trying to do after finishing this one we are creating a docker image and this image we are pushing to any artifactory any repository it can be docker hub or it can be nexus it can be jfrog or it can be the cloud environment like in the cloud also we have artifacts we no need to create a server see if you are managing artifactory then you need to maintain the high availability right you need to maintain for example if you are taken you took one server and you install nexus then you need to maintain the ha for that servers also because if any time this goes down then you cannot able to pull the var files or docker images right so you need to maintain high availability instead of that if you are taking cloud service we have acr in azure Uh, GCR in uh, Google and ECR in the AWS. If you take that, their responsibility to maintain the high availability in the backend. So we'll create image and we'll push the Docker <coughs> image inside the repository here. So here we are going to have Nexus. now this is an access repository or maybe in in our case it will be docker hub so then when we configure cd job it is going to deploy it on the cluster okay so it will pull the docker image and it will deploy inside this cluster this is what we are going to do so now we are going to do this part ci job okay so ci job when we are talking about the ci job here in the same uh, account we have an repository if you see this is a cloud freak repository so here we can see the code this is one of the spring boot application for pet clinic pets okay for pets it's a clinic related application spring boot open source application we have so this application we are going to create an integration it will create an var file and jar file var or jar and then it will be deployed so now this is a code if you see pom.xml this is an mbn commands okay and this src directory is a source code if you see src i hope if you are done devops and uh, if you completed maven you might know about this src main is a main code and developers will write test cases okay if you see here test cases they will write some test cases here and with the help of jmeter it is going to do the test cases now if you go back this is a main code okay so resources if you see here in the resources tab you can see all these things and this is related to the database means this application needs a database so what it will do when you deploy this application it will create a database and automatically the database will be connected to this application why because if this is a website entering all the pets details owner address all these things so it need to store that in the data so back end in the database it is getting stored so that details also available over here itself okay so my sql dot properties from the properties file i have told you in the config maps so if you open this my sql dot properties file so this is database means application to connect the database this is the database which database and the url localhost because it's getting created in the same application and database is creating in the same container or same pod that's why it's taking as a localhost okay so the to connect that username and password it is provided okay 
so database is also getting installed how database is getting installed if you go to the main uh, where it is maybe in the main page docker compose file if you see docker compose file this is creating docker uh, database okay means inside when the application is getting deployed with the help of this docker compose it is creating a database we are not bothered about this okay automatically internally everything is taking care and uh, main important is this code the source code if you see here which contains a java application and these are the test cases so now inside this I have kept some files this is my file and this is my directory remaining all things you can get it from the online also okay if you go to the google pet clinic github if you search here so you can see spring boot application this is a spring boot application okay i think now they have added uh, see uh, some files okay but here you don't see jenkins file and docker directory because those two uh, file and directory has been kept by me inside my own repository for ca job okay so remaining all the things you can see form.xml when command docker compose file all these things you can see but uh, if you compare here you can see extra docker and jenkins file so this is a written by me jenkins file now we need to read this if you are going with freestyle project you can go if you want to write it in a jenkins file you need to write it in this way so okay this is a declarative pipeline not scripted based what is the difference how can you find out whether it's a script based or declarative by looking at this how can you tell whether it's a declarative or script based In stages will be there as a devops engineer the main thing you are going to work is jenkins maximum will work yeah. on jenkins so you should be aware of jenkins because a lot of uh, pipeline scripts nowadays everyone is expecting pipeline scripts yeah. no one is asking to configure freestyle jobs or maven projects okay so you need to know the difference between how to find out if you don't know the difference then how can you write means you did not write anyone did not write any pipeline script till now see for script based pipeline here starts with node for declarative pipeline it will start with pipeline with that you can understand okay this is a declarative pipeline okay so here in this pipeline i have defined four stages first what it will do it will clone in the pipeline you don't need to mention it okay here because already while we configuring the job there will define the clone option so here we no need to do that automatically it will clone and then what it is doing it is clean install package mvn is executing command mvn clean install package okay so what it will do it will clean means whatever it is there it will delete and it will create a new artifact new package once that package is created so this what it is doing copy artifact in this stage what it is doing copy artifact means um, so whenever it is getting cloned whenever it is getting clone for example uh, this is your jenkins server so where lib jenkins this is the default directory of jenkins so whenever the jenkins user is cloning the repository so what it is trying to do what is the path of this one whenever it's clone this is a directory structure right this is the when we clone wherever you are cloning this is a directory structure okay so it is like docker jenkins file and uh, src 
and some form dot xml let's say that these are some defaulted directory structure right so when you are cloning this everything will be under this here so under varlib jenkins the jenkins whenever it is getting cloned varlib jenkins under this where it will be get created under workspace and under this it will get created with a job name let's say if it is a job name is pipeline job under this this directory structure gets created like docker and uh, the complete uh, files will be available jenkins file all this complete directory structure will be available here this way right so when this is done it is going to create a target directory here wherever maven command is executing it is going to create a new target directory i am not sure how many of you practiced maven so when you do maven if you go to for example web app cd web app and if you execute uh, uh, mvn clean uh, install or package mvn clean package or mvn package what it will do in the web app directory itself it will create a directory called target under this it will create a artifactory the tar file uh, jar file or var file it will get created so here also it will get created one directory called target and this target directory under this it will create a jar file okay so here you go to the jenkins file the second stage so what it is doing so that target file is copying into the docker directory means these are on the same working directory so from this location to this location it is copying from target to whatever the jar it gets created so that's why you provided star dot jar so anyhow you can see why i provided this information pw means you can see when we execute this it will display what is your present working directory and it will copy this jar file to docker directory why it need to copy to the docker directory because the purpose of this docker directory here to create the docker image so inside this docker directory i provided a docker file so if you open a docker file it's very simple it's taking base images open jdk so we discussed in the docker we can take any images but lightweight images we need to take and why i am choosing open jdk because this is a java application for java application obviously jdk is mandatory so instead of if i am taking uh, from centos then again i need to add another step to install the jdk instead of that if i am taking open jdk itself as an image we have images with open jdk also if i take that i know i need to add another step to install the open this one jdk software so that's why i'm using this open jdk and when i'm typing this uh, executing this add star dot jar means where from where it is expecting it's i'm adding this command because to copy the jar file from present working directory inside this docker container when this docker file is executed what we it will do wherever this docker file is getting executed it will expect this jar file and to copy so if the jar file is somewhere around here and in this location in this location let's say manually if you are doing where lib jenkins workspace pipeline job docker okay if i do this inside this docker file is there so docker build hyphen t dot this way we need to give to create the docker image because docker file is inside this location so what it will do docker file in this location wherever you are in that location only it will try to search this jar file 
because here we did not give any absolute path here it will not take in the docker file you want to while creating a container if you want to copy a container from your host machine to your container it should be in the same working directory if it is somewhere other different location then you cannot give here that location like slash uh, slash tmp or slash root slash some xyz mm -hmm. that details it cannot copy from there i am not sure how many of you try to do that you can try when you are practicing docker so it should be in the wherever the docker file is there in that same working directory itself whatever the file or directory is there it will be copied if it is in some other location it cannot be copied okay so that's why we are doing what copying this jar file from to here to here so it will be available in the docker so then only this can be executed properly okay and this is to run the java application okay run time so now that's why we created a directory called docker here and so that i mentioned the docker file okay mm. this is a jenkins file and uh, this is what we are discussing now okay this is copying artifact so once it is done from one location to the different location we are copying internal in the jenkins server itself it is happening after that build docker image now what it is doing this line docker dot build and uh, this is the location okay so this is the repository name we are giving like whatever the repository you have this is a docker repository and uh, this is a dot slash docker means it is executing on this docker directory so what it will do it will give this tag okay and then it is pushing to this registry and this is called credentials okay so how you are going to create credentials i will show you mostly tomorrow i will show you or let me show you now Gen in jenkins server we have an option called credentials manage credentials you see here jenkins open this global credentials here you can mention add credentials okay so here you can give username and password and your id what are the id you are giving that name you need to provide it inside the here it is here okay means it is taking these credentials okay so these credentials it is taking and it will connect to the docker up and uh, the image is pushing so here image is getting created with this tag and then it is getting pushed how it is getting pushed so if you see this value dollar env dot build number means what it will do whatever the job number is there if it is a two is a job number with the tag two it is go and push the image why why because it should not overwrite in the repository whenever the code check in happens it will create an image and it should not store with the same name right it will overwrite so extension the build number is going to be there so what are the build job will be there with that it will go and create it okay so this is a credentials we need to create here in the jenkins server already you see here i created this uh, jenkins server credentials i mean this is a docker of credentials you see here this has been created okay tomorrow i will delete it again i will create these credentials okay so that your jenkins server can go and connect and can push that and another important thing is uh, here under the tools i have given maven and jdk these are the names where from where i got these names so these names i got it from the jenkins server so in the jenkins server if you go to manage jenkins 
global tool configuration here obviously you are going to configure maven and uh, um jdk okay you see jdk installation this is the name this is the name i provided and this is a java home and if you see maven this is a name of maven and this is a home path okay these two things you need to configure in the jenkins you are telling this to the jenkins this is a maven home and this is a jdk home so these names you need to provide it inside this one otherwise it will not work if you give even though m caps here it will not work so whatever the names you provided in the jenkins for maven and jdk the same thing should be provided here okay and this is the docker of credentials now if you see um, in the jenkins server already for previous batch i shown ci job and cd job now once again i'll create a new job okay it's very simple go to the new item and before this one more thing i would like to show you uh, manage jenkins manage plugins please note it down uh, There should be a uh, Docker. Why Docker comments is there? Where is Docker pipeline? Sorry, I'm checking in the updates. Installed one. Okay. In the installed one, if I check Docker, this plugin by default will be not available. Compulsory, you need to install this plugin, Docker pipeline. Otherwise, your CI job will not work. Please install this plugin. Okay. No, I'm plugin is also required, right? Those plugins will be by default available. Only you need to install Docker pipeline plugin. Okay. I think EC2 is also required. Default, sorry. EC2 plugin is also required here. No, nothing. Only Docker okay. pipeline plugin install. Okay. So I'm creating a new job. Hmm. Pet clinic demo CI. This is the name I'm giving. So here I'm selecting pipeline. Okay, select this pipeline. And uh, come down here. You are not going to select any of these things. Just select here pipeline script from SEM. if you select this one you need to copy that jenkins file over here instead of that if you do this from SEM means i am telling my pipeline is in the source code so from there it should be executed and SEM is a git in your real time so obviously it's a private so you need to provide the credentials here so your credentials should be configured in real time it will be your domain credentials means single credentials will work for SEM, single credentials will work for uh, nexus single credentials work for anything right domain credentials that you need to add in your uh, jenkins so that you can select here but for us it's an um, public repository so we don't need to worry about that so here i need to clone this repository select this one this is a repository copy okay and uh, master branch just select the branch by default it's in master branch in your real-time environment you will be deploying in different environments right so you just check uh, which branch you are trying to deploy that you need to select here and uh, second thing is this is the jenkins file script to path c this Jenkins file is directly available inside this repo. That's why we are giving here direct Jenkins file. In case if this Jenkins file is available under some other directory, means let's say inside the XYZ directory, again inside that some other directory, then you should give that path here. 
why i'm giving directly jenkins file here because it is exactly under the repo that's why i'm giving here jenkins file otherwise you need to give let's say abc some directory cd something like this whatever the location is there that way otherwise the script will fail and your job will fail because jenkins file did not found so this way you need to give that's it apart from that nothing to add save okay and now let me build this job open this console output started okay see present working directory as i said workspace slash this is the job name i was talking here right uh, workspace job name under that it will be cloned all this uh, directories files everything will be cloned here so test cases it started executing state test cases If your machine doesn't have enough memory, then it will not work properly because it needs more than one GB of RAM. So that's why we selected a T2 dot small, which contains two GB of RAM for Jenkins server. pushed success okay so now once the build is successful build means what it's created a jar file okay so it created if you see here i was talking about this one under jenkins workspace pet clinic this is a job name target this is a jar file name we don't know how it gets created that's why we were giving star dot jar in the jenkins file so where it got created under the target where is this target exactly under this job name so that's why here here um, we did not give any absolute path because in the present working directory i've shown you where we were there exactly so this jar file is getting copied to docker okay if you see here present working directory is this and uh, cpfnr under the target this file got created and it copied to docker once it is created copy to docker docker build iphone t praveen korvi is the repository in the docker app and this is the name of the image it's created with the help of this one in the docker file and then it's created a image if you see here with the latest tag it created once it is created with the latest tag then what i've done i connected to docker login i find you this is a username and this is the registry okay and after that login successful is done then docker tag I'm giving the tag, okay? So Pravin Kovi Pet Clinic, and this is if you see instead of latest, now we are giving tag as a one. Why? Because with the help of this one, so it's connected, and it's giving the tag. Now Docker push registry dot hub dot docker dot com, and this is the image name. What are the image name we created? We pushed it. If you want to see hub dot docker dot com.
what I need to do here select all squares with traffic lights. Okay, so if you see four minutes ago, updated four minutes ago. See all. So this is the latest one. Four minutes ago, this was updated. If I execute once again, job two gets created. Then again, it will come and it will store inside this one so this is my repository which i created and this is the image name petrini so this whenever you are see in your environment if it is nexus so what are the nexus repo you have with that and what is the image name you want to create with that we already practiced docker so here first if you see docker build iphone t means what are the image we are creating we are giving this image name so that this name should be your nexus repo or artifact repository then only you can able to push otherwise you cannot push if you see docker tag and it is giving one so when you do docker push then only it is go and push there if you're giving some other name here okay so some other name here then it will not be able to push to the repository Okay, yesterday we were trying to um, create a killer component the initialization between the Jenkins server and uh, the Google Cloud right so here means <clears throat> so this is our Jenkins server and uh, this is our cluster and uh, here we are trying to create a tiller component okay so from here when we are whenever we are doing helm helm init service account tiller we are getting some errors so the problem is let me try once again so that I can get that error. This is the Jenkins server. I was using. We need to install G Cloud inside this Jenkins server. If you remember, we when we uh, installed uh, created cluster in the Google Cloud to access it, we used uh, G Cloud, right? So that should be installed inside the Jenkins server. And to install that, the prerequisite is Python some 2.7 version. So by default in the operating system, you are going to get 2.6 version. So it is not compatible. Again, you need to upgrade that Python version. Okay, then it will work. So what I thought instead of doing all these mandatory steps, we can use our AWS bare metal cluster. Okay, so simply we can connect and we can uh, do the things. So this was the command we were trying to execute from Jenkins user. So if you see here, USR lib Google Cloud SDK, uh, bin G Cloud. This is a command, G Cloud command. This will get when you install Google Cloud. So it is telling no such file or directory. 
so to connect the google cloud so we need to get g cloud should be installed inside this so to install this g cloud we need to have python version you will see 2.7.6 is there okay so when we try to install google cloud sdk it is telling uh, some python package is this one and it is uh, expecting some other package python 2.6.9 version is showing 2.7 but here package is showing 2.6 okay so that is a problem that's the reason we can use our uh, we can upgrade this whatever the version it is expecting we can uh, upgrade it but again we may get some other problem so instead of wasting time so we have another cluster right see cluster is anything is same only the way we are connecting is different. The remaining thing, everything is same. So we have already the bare metal cluster with us. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy the config file of this cluster to the Jenkins server, okay? And then we'll do the same initialization. So if we log into the master server here, So now connected to the cluster which is created in the AWS bare metal. Now kubectl get pods hyphen n cube hyphen system. Tiller is already available here. So if you see kubectl get deployment hyphen n cube hyphen system. So this is already available. So what I'm going to do kubectl delete deployment. This is a deployment name iPhone in cube iPhone system. So again, we, we are going to recreate it. So if you check, Tiller pod is not available. Now cat etc kubernetes admin.conf. So this is a file. So this file we need to copy. and uh, in this machine vi dot cube config so i'm deleting everything from the config file and adding the new information inside this one bare metal cluster information Okay, and uh, now if you check Helm version, could not find Tiller. So it is telling, means it did not establish connection to the cluster, right? So just maybe copied that. So now what I'm going to do, I will execute the same uh, command this one. We'll see what will happen. Okay, so our selling killer is already installed in the cluster. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete this one, rmf.helm. Now, 
again i'm going to do this driller is already installed in the cluster okay it got deployed if you see 49 seconds ago it got deployed so this is how easily we can work with this one the jenkins server i executed this one so this is the step of the previous class like when we are configuring the jenkins server during that time we completed this okay but we were trying to deploy the same thing on the google cloud but it's lengthy process so instead of that now i'm thinking do the same on the bare metal cluster itself okay so because it's expecting a lot of other presets but if it in the bare metal concept it is not asking anything but only thing is to configure this in the bare metal we were using t2 dot medium and hero dot small servers which are chargeable okay so now this is ready and uh, ca job was completed and it's created a artifact and it's the docker image and the docker image is available here now right so the docker image is available here now we need to execute the cd job now we'll discuss about the cd job okay so what we are going to do let me take this jenkins server how to configure the cd job this one So now I'm going to configure um, CD job. CA job is separate. See, in, in your organization, it depends whether they are asking for continuation CA CD in a single job or is it in the separate jobs? CA separate, CD job separate. So if it is a continuation, then after this uh, creating image, then the continuation, the remaining steps. Anyhow, it's a Jenkins file. In CD also, you are going to configure Jenkins file the jenkins file what are the steps are there that need to be added inside the ci job itself very simple okay so it's up to you like your organization demands how they are expecting mostly it will be not uh ci cd will be in the same job because if developers done some changes in the code and uh, immediately if the code check-in happens automatically jenkins will trigger a job and it will do ci but whatever is changes has been updated on the code and the ca job is executed and it's created var file and it's created docker image immediately if you are going and deploying on some environment okay means it is changing the environment so someone might be using that environment whether it may be testing environment or whether it may be develop environment some application guys might be testing that okay if you all of a sudden changes that then again they don't want that particular change should be applied for their testing they are doing some testing on some uh, functionality or whatever it may be so if the changes has been applied then again they need to test this they did not test the old one so that's why cd job will be not triggered along with the ci job okay because we will have different environments staging environment uh, UAT environment and uh, develop environment and pre pro environment. So, in these environments, we will not do CI CD together. Okay. So, whenever we want, we will go with specific version to deploy on the environment so that testing team, functional team can do the testing on their environment. Okay. So, that's why I configured separate, separate jobs for CD also. So, now 
before configuring uh, this one let me go to the github repository where my helm chart is available so here also we are using helm chart for cd job also we are going to use helm charts okay so now in this repository this is the one pet clinic is a repo for cd job so here what it contains helm helm chart is available and jenkins file is available so if you see we already discussed about helm charts right we have a separate session on helm chart so here by default values.yml file is there i remove unnecessary files so these are important files so that's why i kept these files because this main dates metadata of this one the version the name and uh, this is a template as i said what are the components you want to create then all those yaml files should be available here here i have these many components inside this you can have multiple components also okay so like uh, volumes creation jobs execution okay and uh, secrets config maps anything any kubernetes objects you want to create at the time of deployment you need to prepare a yaml file for that and you need to put it here okay so if you see the deployment.yml file i'm using the kindest deployment here As I said, deployment is the kind deployment have a lot of advantages. You can do rolling update, you can do canary deployment, all these things. Okay. Blue green deployment. And this is the type is rolling update. So here this is the name, labels name. And uh, inside this, when we are deploying, whatever the applications get deployed, this is a container specifications so to that container what are the specifications you are giving so this is a name for the container and uh, on, i did not hard coded uh did not configure variables for all the fields basically in the real time we can configure see always you no need to come to the deployment.yml file all things we can put it in the values.yml file so here we can give in this way but only to understand i gave only for image i'm telling that go and check in the values.yml file i'm going to update in the values.yml file so for anything it will pick up from the values.yml file that's why we give dot values means it will go and check in the value for the values.yml file so for everything you can do variables like in scripting while writing scripting how you are going to write you put all the variables and uh, while down while writing the scripting you will give the variable to pick up from that variable so same way key value pairs are the same way here also we can put all these variables inside the values.yml file and you can give the location of that one okay where exactly you can get that value even here one cpu also you can put it there dot values dot uh, cpu limit dot cpu that way you can put it so every time we can just go and change the values.yml file okay so here i am giving one cpu and one gb of ram so your virtual machines means your worker nodes should have at least two cpus that's why i selected here uh it dot medium why because which contains two cpus minimum because if it contains only one cpu already by default your os might be taking some cpu and uh, kubernetes components will be get created okay those components might be already using the cpu so if your application you configured with one cpu then your application will not come online okay that's why i selected t2.medium medium okay one cpus has been and one gp ram because for this application 
minimum it required in real time when you are uh, uh, um, deploying the application this will be so how we are going to configure for specific microservice that will be provided by the developers or performance testing team there will be two teams will be there functional testing performance testing so performance testing team guys will have the capacity how much need to be allocated for microservice means they might be already uh, tested the application the legacy application so they are aware about how much uh, capacity will take by this specific microservice so based on their recommendation we will fill the details because as an administrator as a devops engineers we don't know how much resources will consume by the each microservice so this information you will get it from the performance testing team or maybe the developer application guys will know how much we need to give based on that we need to provide the resources here okay so this one minimum 1 gb it will take it doesn't take one cpu you can give 500 millicore also but uh, when the initialization time means when the application initialization starting time it will take maximum cpu and then it will come down so that's why i gave one cpu and one gp of ram okay so only thing is it's taking the values from the values.yaml file this is a deployment uh, .yaml file for this application it's pulling the image so whatever the image we created yesterday that image location we can give in the values.yaml file so it will pick up that image okay and uh, coming to the templates again so these are default files so this if you see these files where if you know go language and uh, the values you want to give in a go language way means more advanced way then you should use this helpers.tpl file or else you can ignore that just general normal variable concept also you can configure or put all the values in the values.yaml file okay and this is also empty file and it's not matter here i added the file is deployment.yaml file petlinic and mem and service.yaml file these are the three components it's going to get created okay so if you see the service now this is for load balancer accessing this application from the external world we already discussed about service load balancer node port so even if i'm giving load balancer it will not get created we need to use the ip of the node only as i said on bare metal here it will not get created public ip it will not get assigned so that's why we need to use still even though if it is a load balancer we need to take the ip of the node port to access the application which is get deployed and this label name you can see it right these are the selector label name so this service is for that application and this is fixed port i provided here 32750 if you don't give this randomly it will give some port number from already discussed 32002 30002 some 32760 something like that those ports are reserved for this configuring the service okay so internal application is configured with 8080 port number so externally we are going to access it with 32750 so now this is about uh, and let me show you the values.yaml file so this is a values.yaml file and if you see image image and uh, repository is this one okay latest is uh, tag is latest we open another page uh pet clinic and uh, templates deployment okay dot values is common or if you are putting the values in the values.yaml file then dot values means we are telling that dot values means go and check in the values.yaml file and after that if you see image repository and uh, this is image and this is repository so this is the name of the repository and uh, tag image 
tag and you can see this is the image and this is the tag this way you need to give okay so if you don't give properly here then it will give you an error this yaml file error. if you don't give dot image if you give dot values dot tag then it doesn't know where tag is there so if you give in a sequence order this way let's say under tag some other option is there like after this under the tag it's like a child option then here we need to give tag dot that name what are the name we are giving so that way we are concrete so all the values you can configure here okay so let's say as i said last time also i said this is values.yaml for example uh, resources i want to add okay so i'll give resources two space cpu one and memory one gb okay so this way i can give so in the values.yaml how uh, in the deployment.yaml how i'm going to give here let's say here so here if you see resources limits is there request is there so what's the difference limit means up to this much it can go okay it is not going to use that much request means it will need that much okay means whenever you are initializing means uh, whenever the you are deploying the pod it expects whatever you define in the request okay means if you mention here let's say i mention here 500 millicore okay and uh, if i give 500 gb means it will start with that but if it is expecting more then it can go up to this much limits maximum limits maybe assume your application needs only 250 millicore cpus and 500 mb of ram so here we'll give that value and in the limits value we'll give up to what level it can go means slowly the application is a lot of users are connecting and uh, it expecting more resources so instead of 250 millicore it is expecting 500 millicores then if this is a limitation max it can go 1 gb 1 cpu beyond that it cannot go okay so even though a lot of users are connecting and a lot of uh, resource has been utilizing it cannot go more than this one that is the limit so here if you want that value separately then what we can do here now limits and this should be under this one it, you should not give in this way it should be under this one okay and after that then here request so now do space cpu 250 millicore memory and uh, 500 mb okay so this way i can give in the values.yml the same thing how i can give inside the uh, deployment.yml file so here Let's say, let me copy this. So values, default, now resources, dot limits, dot CPU. This way, and uh, same thing I'll copy and uh, i'll put it here and this will be the memory so from here it will take the value okay so this is for limits and same thing copy and here not limits it's a resource uh, request 
and same thing copy and here memory okay so values dot values dot re from resources this is a main one resources under this limits requests are there so under the limits cpu memory so from this way it can able to get the values because why i'm telling this specifically because in your organization you are not going to give this hard coded values okay this way even names these values also will ask to do the variable configuration in the values.yml file so that's why i'm telling you so it's very simple to do that okay so this way you can do and it will take it from the uh values.yml file so all the things you can try if you have enough time you want to do r d so what you are going to do you can do the same thing for all these values like for example replicas and for these values okay and even for names also you want to pick it from the values.yml file everything you can do these values the values.yml and you can try to deploy okay so this is about the template okay so i was talking about uh, this will uh, discuss later understood right so deployment.yml petrinic when this is a uh, files as we said what are the components would like to create all the things should be kept under this location okay like uh, we have seen for example uh, prometheus helm chat if you see lot of components will be available inside the templates directory let's go to the default stable uh, GitHub location. If you see templates directory, these many components will get created. Config maps, daemon sets, deployments, lot of things will get created. Alert manager.yml file will be created. Okay. So here in our example, we are just creating two things for our application to run. So you need to decide for your organization what are the things it's expecting all the things should be under that helm chart so this is about helm chart now inside this one jenkins file is there okay this is a jenkins file so this is very simple pipeline agent any means any machine it will go and uh, execute this job Okay, if it, is, if it doesn't have uh, slaves in your Jenkins, then it will execute it on master. If you want to execute it on any specific uh, slave, then you should give the label name here. Okay, so build. So this is what just build. These all are just a commands to see uh, in which directory we have. So this command, what it is doing, whenever the clone is done, so it is copying the what are the content is inside this one copying to the present working directory why because so let me the default directory will be the jenkins what where the jenkins workspace uh, let's say if this is pipeline cd job okay this is a job name I'm giving slash and whatever the content it's trying to clone that will be cloned here whenever the job executes. So what it is going to executing helm pet clinic right helm pet clinic. So this is what it's going to be copied. So now it contains the helm chart the deployment or yaml file templates directory jenkins file everything will be available so petronic here it contains the chart means the details everything uh, the values dot yaml everything is available even jenkins file also now the first step is 
star what it will do so the present working directory means what it will show this this is as the present working directory then what it is trying to do cp this one okay so present working directory will be then it will be copied so in the present working directory it will be copied means what are this pet clinic is there it will be copied into the present working directory so when it is in the present working directory means this one this will be your present working directory and this will be copied here okay why we are copying because when i am executing helm command this is a chart helm chart name so directly i am giving helm chart name because it is getting executed here otherwise i should give the complete this path over here so i don't want to give the complete path here the absolute path that's why i am copying that content to the present working directory location so that i can just directly give the relative path i hope everyone knows in linux absolute path and relative path absolute path means full path you are giving relative path means you will go inside that path and we will do the work okay so that's why this is the name of the chart okay if you don't give this option then here for reference you need to give the complete path of the chart wherever the git run has been done the chart is available then you need to give this complete location okay and here we are using helm command upgrade and install option we are giving this way you need to give why because for the first time you are deploying you can use install option but all it's deployed again you are redeploying then it will take upgrade command okay that's why we gave two options so what it will do if it is not there it will install if it is already there it will upgrade you install some application microservice on the uh, cluster it's running again you want to try to like you got new image and uh, that image you provided the details in the values.yaml file updated in the helm chart again you want to deploy that one so again if you are doing the same command so if you have helm install means what it will do it will give you error that already it is installed that microservice is already installed so separate you need to use helm upgrade command so instead of executing separate separate commands in the single command itself you can use in this way upgrade i have enough installment if this is the first time it will install if it is already installed the deployed has been done then it will try to upgrade the existing one okay it's, it's like redeploy and this is a name for your microservice in your organization what are the microservices there with that name the naming convention should be proper so don't give demo data or with your name in your organization for testing point of view also so give relevant application names so you can give in this way if it is a dev or a uat environment then give that pet clinic iphone app iphone dev or uat this way you need to give the naming convention okay so don't give how you are practicing in the lab don't give the same names in the organization okay so here you can give up to this one that's enough but you can override the values which are inside the values.yaml file means there is some values in the values.yaml file while executing through the helm you can override the values of values.yaml file okay if you don't want to overwrite any values then you can ignore this this line okay but if you want to overwrite it then you can use iphone fn set okay and then if you see image dot repository this is available inside the values.yaml file so what we are telling uh, if you go to the values.yaml file actually what is the image name here petlinic image but we don't have petlinic image
we have pet clinic the name itself the pet clinic it's not pet clinic image for this we have latest tag is one which we built yesterday okay a day ago this is a one the latest tag so pet clinic and the tag is one but uh, what is configured in the values.yml file pet clinic image so this name i am overwriting at the time of deployment okay so if you see here only pet clinic is there and i have and set image dot tag is one this way we can give override the values here if you don't want to overwrite then remove this line this one just give till here it will get executed and uh, here you can give the namespace also we already discussed uh, in the from jenkins server manually we were trying to deploy some applications nginx okay so we were using helm command so what we can do hyphen hyphen namespace you can go in which namespace you want to deploy that is also decided from here lot of other options not only this image or this one whatever is in the values.yml file you want to override during the deployment that values you can give it here so that it will not take the values from the values.yml it will take the values from this okay so this is the jenkins file so this is a repo for this repo we need to configure job so we have a scm and uh, we have a pet clinic repo right so this is a repo repository is available which contains the helm charts so along with and jenkins file this is information is available inside this repository now this is the jenkins server here we need to configure a job okay cd job now what we are going to do go to the jenkins new item um pet clinic demo cd this is the name i am giving cd job same select pipeline okay so only you need to select pipeline script from source code management and uh, it's a git and here we need to give the url and where is the uh, this is the repo and this is the option to clone it this is the repo to clone and give this information here so credentials it's a public so it's not expecting any credentials and it's in the default master branch this you should be careful in your organization so which from which branch you are picking up that is important okay there will be difference between multiple branches and this is the path of your jenkins file so this jenkins file gets executed now so as i said yesterday what are the path is there that you need to provide it okay otherwise it will tell file not found it's done so now let me build this job and before that we can see kubectl get pods we can see jenkins masters and uh, nfs only we can see now we'll see build now check the log okay cloning of remote repository is done 
and if you see the present present working directory till job name as i said okay pipeline city job this is my present working directory inside this it's copied wherever it's cloned this directory structure will be available but this will be my present working directory so what we are doing cp our helm so this under this directory whatever is there copying to present working directory okay so cp fnr in the present working directory and if you see lsf nl here this is available and again we can check present working directory helm upgrade if nf install command is getting executed and this is the name which we are giving to this release okay if you see release petlinic if nf and uh, this is the chart name don't get confused what is this what is this this is the name this is up to you anything you can give it and this is a chart name so chart name was copied to the present working directory that's why we are telling this is a chart name and in this chart i am right overwriting some values so to pick up some specific image and if you see release does not exist I means this is the first time that's why it's installed next time again if you install this will be already available so it will not tell does not exist okay and uh, whenever you execute elm command to install some packages in the cluster applications you want to install this will be the output what are the resources you defined inside the template will be shown here service service account uh, deployment uh, this is hpa horizontal pod auto scaler so all these components will show and you should get the success if you do any mistakes then it will give an error and again you need to modify your helm chart accordingly and then you need to redeploy it okay so now let me go and see here the same option see two minutes ago pet clinic application is running and apart from this what are the other kubectl get uh, svc for checking the service and uh, which one got created this is the one pet clinic iphone service and it is showing pending it will not get an external ip and this is the port number which we defined which we defined inside the service.yaml file kubectl this is also got created this will discuss tomorrow auto scaling we did not discuss the auto scaling right auto scaling of parts did we discuss horizontal pod auto scaler no okay tomorrow we will discuss so i will explain that this is the one of the um, component got created for auto scaling this is mentioned inside the template that's what gets created so what are the components or objects you define to create inside the chat those things will be get created okay can we now, access this application from any server or any gui yes the next step is that is the one oh. so now i am going to access this application so here we already created a load balancer with this port number but we don't have any external ip to access it and this is for internal inside the cluster you can able to access so to access it from the external world we can take any of the node IP. Okay. So let's take if I take this is our node IP. And give 32750 port number. Okay, this is the application, the pet clinic application is available and uh, find owners if you want to add a owner okay last name not found so add owner full name first name okay so it has been added owner information add a new pet for my owner 
name. Oh. Where is created database server? Database will be inside the pod. Inside okay. the pod itself, this pod is created, right? This one, inside that pod itself, application is running, database is also running. Basically, in real time, we have separate database, but here they are giving all together in a single application. So it will create database and it will application will get connected to the database. And what are the information we are storing here that will go and store in the database? Can you show me the data uh, like you entered? See, that is not the part of database connecting and showing, right? So our intention is to access the application in the Kubernetes cluster. So how backend that application is connecting database and because I'm not good at database, I don't know how to check the database connectivity, all these things. So if you know the commands, then you can connect to the pod. Inside that, you can just check database uh, tables and uh, entries, all these things. Whenever we are executing this, how it is getting added, that you can check database. So this is not yeah, about the database. But... Yeah, the source code is on GitHub. Probably you can review that, yes. So something like this, we can add a pet for this owner. Okay. See, now it got, when I previously, I couldn't able to search. Now if with the last name, I can able to search owner. So this is the owner information and this is details like this multiple owners information will be available here if so, who is maintaining that okay so this is how we will access this application in real time this will be a separate microservice will be there and uh, this is a complete application your microservice is going to application guys will give you the url how to check the status of health status of that microservice so you need to check the health status okay so if it is having any ip with uh, any url any path see so inside that uh, application there will be path will be there to know whether application is really up or not so that you are going to confirm why because your application might be dependent on some other service or your application might be dependent on database or your application might be dependent on uh, messaging queue okay like rabbit mq so like this so whenever it's getting started when we deploy so what are the prerequisites it is expecting if everything is works fine then only your pod will function properly and the application will function properly otherwise your application will not start so that you need to troubleshoot where exactly it is going wrong so for that you can check kubectl logs and um, the pod name you can give okay so if you see here everything works fine there only you'll get this information tomcat running or uh, java application started running so this will be getter if you see started pet application in 18 seconds in real time also if your java application is there it will give you that this application has been started but if it's not started properly then on top you can see uh, while connecting to which uh, dependency it is failed you can see in the logs okay maybe it's trying to connect the database but database is not available database is in down state or maybe port might be not accessible or maybe there is a network issue between your cluster and with the database so it's not trying to reach so there you can see the errors logs errors okay so with the help of logs you can able to troubleshoot what exactly then you can tell to the respective if you are not the owner of the dependency then you can tell the application guys that due to this dependency it is getting failed so they will help you uh, to whom we need to contact for maybe messaging you or maybe some other service let's say for example you have 15 services and uh, there is might be dependency so you should be very careful that 
internally they will be dependent on some other microservices okay some may be independent it might not depend on any other uh, microservice but some microservices will be dependent so you need to know the hierarchy the structure of that um, microservices which one should be deployed first which one should be deployed second third okay otherwise due to dependency problem it will not function maybe seventh one is dependent on some third microservice so without deploying third if you're first deploying seventh one then it will get fail fail means pod will not come online it will show in the failed state and because it's trying to reach some other microservice which not got deployed on the cluster and is expecting that okay so as i said how in the config maps it will be defined the name of the other microservice to connect so whatever the service name you are going to give for this service we have given a pet clinic hyphen service whatever the name we have provided here kubectl get svc so this is the name so for other service what are the service name will be that will be defined inside the config maps okay so that it will go and connect to that name so if that is not yet deployed then it cannot able to reach so that you need to make sure dependency structure hierarchy structure you need to maintain which one should be deployed first which one should be second third that should make a document if you don't have then if you already have a document then you need to follow that don't deploy 15th first as first as the last okay so it will be fail all the things will fail and this is very very important because a lot of times i used to get issues because microservice used to have a lot of dependencies my microservice was having dependency of database and um, rabbitmq and other services so a lot of issues you used to get okay and credentials that is also important how you are passing the credentials with only secret option or you have any other third party mechanism you want to use that is also another case so all these issues you can resolve from the checking the logs okay so this is how we do the deployment to the hell so today we'll talk about um, horizontal pod auto scaler so here whenever we are deploying the applications okay let's say we are deploying the applications based upon the ci job it will create an artifact and then uh, we will deploy we'll configure a job for our for example as we said 15 microservices are there so 15 microservices one by one will configure inside the jenkins and will deploy see again it depends uh, how we are deploying it some people may use uh, different tools maybe some people may use uh, harness harness is also one of the tool to deploy the applications then they will not use jenkins okay so depends whether they are using jenkins or harness or they might be using some ansible to deploy so majority will be jenkins okay or you can use azure devops also in the azure devops also you can configure pipelines and you can uh, deploy the applications right so it's completely depends but uh, majorly preferable is jenkins okay so now if you take a single microservice it is getting deployed and um, when you are deploying in the deployment.yml file you are mentioning replicas is three so the pod gets created assume if you have three worker nodes and it gets created three pods and uh, we configure service for this so to that service traffic will come mostly it will be cluster ip or uh, load balancer so for that it will come the load based on that the incoming traffic will be received in case if there is a huge traffic and these three also not sufficient so what is going to happen we need to auto scale our pods right 
so we need to auto scale our pods and when the load is normal again the pod should be deleted means extra pod should be deleted and uh, only whatever the defined value in the replicas field only those many pods should be available okay so for this we need to configure horizontal pod auto scaler we call it as an hpa So this horizontal pod autoscaler we can configure for CPU and RAM. Whenever there is a huge CPU utilization is done, then we can configure few more pods should be created. And uh, if the memory is highly utilized, then also we can configure to increase the pods. So the horizontal pod autoscaler automatically scales the number of pods in a replication controller deployment replica set or stateful set these are deployment types okay we already discussed set based on observation cp utilization or with custom metric support on some other application power metrics note that horizontal power screen does not apply to object that can be can be scaled for example daemon sets so daemon sets you know right so we cannot mention replicas in the daemon set deployment automatically how many worker nodes are there on the, those many work nodes it will go and deploy the pod we no need to provide any replicas over there so in this scenario we cannot uh, provide autoscaler for that and uh, we need to deploy and along with that uh, for scaling purpose we need to configure a horizontal pod autoscaler so default parts will be there extra parts will get created but for this to implement this first of all our cluster machine should have the metric server should be installed okay so here if you log into this master server So here, first of all, metric server should be configured. If you take uh, AKS or GKS, maybe I think metric server by default it will be available. Let me see. Already GKS cluster is there. See here, metric server pod is already running. So we no need to install metric server in Google Cloud, means GKE, and even in AKS also. By default, they're providing this metric server. But this is in the bare metal concept, it's not available. If you see in the kubectl uh, get pods, I find in the cube system, only cluster related. Uh, Pods available. Okay, it's available. Why? Because the same cluster I used for previous batch, that's why it is available. Okay. Kubectl mm, get deployment hyphen in. So this is the. Okay. Hyphen in. is deleted okay now it is not available 
so here by default it is available the purpose of this what is mean by matrix matrix means the collection of your the cpu uh, ram network utilization all these things will be configured okay so if there is no matrix server is uh, deployed then you cannot able to see the resource utilizations of your cluster now cube ctl top pods in default namespace nothing is available so nothing will be displayed iphone n cube iphone system so see it is showing cpu resource utilization memory utilization and this is called top so i hope most of you guys in the linux we use top command to see the resource utilization right same way here cube ctl top pods it is showing okay so cpu and memory if you don't have metric server it is not going to show so first of all whenever you are configuring a <coughs> um, hpa you need to check whether metric server is available or not okay so if you see pods dot matrix is not available the server is currently unable to handle the request so if there is no matrix there is no point of checking the resource utilization okay so there is two types of uh, deployments are available heapster and matrix server so heapster is old and matrix server is the latest one okay so that's why we use matrix server heapster so if you see here retired heapster so heapster is no more using by the organizations so for that we are using matrix server the latest one okay so that's why we need to install matrix server for that we have an documentation github you see here matrix server it what is matrix server it collects matrix like cpu memory or disk io consumption per containers or nodes from the summary api exposed by kubelet and it uses 3443 port number and um, so here tone matrix server helm chart on gate master create matrix server okay so here Repository is also available in my repo. I have this uh, Helm chart is available. Just I need to clone it. MKDIR metric server. So here I want to clone it. So let me clone. You can see. The directory called metric server here uh, cd deploy mm, 1.8 let me go inside this one so these are the files okay so these are the yaml files so its deployment is available service is available some reader these are delegators available these are the resources to create matrix server okay so if you want to create all at a time then simply qctl create hyphen f dot if you give then whatever the yaml files are available in this present working directory all get executed we no need to execute one by one execute it okay so it is giving error because this is already executed right previously so whatever the uh, cluster role binding cluster roles is available it is already saying it's already exists if you see here exists so kubectl get pod siphon and kubeiphon system it got deployed okay so far in your case it will not give you this error why because if you are executing for the first time then automatically it will create everything but here all of these roles are available so that's the reason it is showing i only deleted the deployment 
okay that belongs to this one matrix or deployment but remaining things already available so that's why it says already exists so for you it will not give that error and uh, you need to go inside this 1.8 this is a path means after you clone this will be the directory under this go to the deploy and uh, 1.8 plus go to this directory you will find the yaml files then just execute this command okay so now i type kubectl top pod siphon n kubeiphone system now i can able to execute top command right so this is a cp utilization of pods and this is a memory utilization and let me see any default pods are available these are the default to pods okay so what i am going to do kubectl top pods so if you see here it is showing one milliquad the pet clinic which we deployed yesterday it is taking one milliquad but at the time of initialization when the when we deploy this application at the time of the starting of application it will take around almost one cpu then it will slow down okay and uh, approximately memory is 257 mb okay so now what we are going to do we can configure horizontal pod auto scaler okay first we'll uh, practice cpu and then we'll practice memory okay so for that i have a documentation go to the docs and uh, this one hpa so what we need to do this hpa to configure hpa first of all compulsory inside your deployment.yaml file you need to define the resources see in some scenarios in a deployment.yaml file when you are deploying so let me open this in another tab if you don't give resources like in docker how we don't give resources same way here also if you don't give the resources not in the docs let me go to the helm chart of pet clinic okay here in the deployment.yaml file if you see here resources is there right if this is not available okay if this is not available still you can deploy your application but for horizontal pod auto scaler compulsory you should give this resources okay otherwise you cannot configure horizontal pod auto scaler because without telling how much resource you allocated how can you tell that if it is a threshold is reached to this much of percentage then it should trigger an auto scaling right if you are not telling this resources limitations all these things then you cannot configure horizontal for auto scaler so that's why we need to configure for every deployment resources how much resources you want to allocate to that particular pods which are getting deployed so this is the one and already yesterday discussed about this one request means when the pod is getting initialized it will expect minimum this much of resource and limits means in future if it is taking more resources lot of traffic is coming then it can use maximum up to one cpu and this much okay so that is called limits in whatever the limit you mentioned it can go up to that limit understood but when the application is initialized by default will take this value this much of value that is a difference but here both i gave one cpu 500 mb of ram okay just a second okay so this we can configure and uh, 
this is the hpa.yaml file you can give this any name okay for recognition purpose you can give hpa.yaml file and this is important so this is kind if you see horizontal pod autoscaler and you can give any name and here you can give max replicas phi and here always remember in deployment.yaml file what are the replicas you give here the same you should configure here also otherwise it will confuse which one should be followed whether this one or this one okay so it will take this value if you give three here and here if you are giving one it will take this value so make sure here and here it will be the same value replicas minimum replicas so maximum whatever you give so it can go up to five okay so start with one but maximum it can go up to five means even though if the two parts are also busy and uh, third part will get created third is also busy fourth will get created and uh, here how this horizontal pod autoscaler is integrating with this deployment the labels if you see here kind of deployment and the name of the deployment is pet clinic hyphen deployment so this is the name so we are telling that this is for this particular deployment kind okay so and target cpu utilization percentage it's depend for easy purpose i'm giving 50 and uh, in real time it can be 70 or 80 percent or 90 percent after that how to test it i want to do some fake testing like a fake load i will create so that i will see whether pod is getting created or not that then only we can confirm right see now organization also if we are configured first of all we should show the demo how it's working then only we can implement it so for that purpose we can do some uh, testing by creating fake load so that pod will get created and automatically it should get deleted when the load is normal so for that uh, i'm installing some package called siege it's a stress tester so then uh, i'll install with this you can use any linux mission okay but here i'm using uh, master why because why i should create another linux mission so that's the reason i'm using uh, master if it is an aks or uh, any gks gke in that network whichever another machine is available linux machine just install in that machine there should be network communication that's it and uh, we need to execute these commands and this is the url of your microservice okay if it is individual microservice obviously you'll configure some load balancer and uh, you'll access it right so that ip you should provide here so in our case it's complete website so what are the website we are accessing i am going to give that particular ip and port number where that uh, website is running that i am going to give in real time the microservice whatever is there that is not a complete website right all together 10 or 15 microservices together is called a website but individually also we can test it we can access it that individual microservices so we'll get ip that ip we need to provide here so it will send some uh, load to the site and your pod will become busy full resource and it will create new pod so the well, that will see practical and uh, this hpa.yaml file we are going to give in the helm chart so when we are deploying as i said so here we are going to mention that if you see here pet clinic hyphen mem this is related to the memory okay if you see resource memory but uh, i want uh, cpu related why i did not mention both the files in the helm chart because see i am using uh, uh, what t2 dot medium which contains uh, two cpus i think 4 gb ram okay so both the metrics will apply it and it will try to create both the pods so we don't have that much of resources means whenever the memory is high it will create a pod and cpus also it will create a pod so that's why first i'll show you cpu if in case if we have um, 
more capacity then i can put both the files in the helm chart and they can, i can apply but uh, as of now we have less resources in our t2 dot medium so that's why i don't want to try both by adding uh, hpa dot yaml and uh, memory hpa dot yaml file in the both okay so now what i'm going to do i'll change this okay so instead of jenkins server means instead of configuring job all this thing uh, directly i can also what i can do i can clone this into the jenkins server from there i'll execute helm command okay see when i was doing practice i always don't go to the jenkins server uh, dashboard and create a job execute it so when i'm doing practical until i get success i used to uh, execute the same jenkins command like uh, yesterday we configured jenkins server right uh, inside that the helm command is getting executed here this one so this jenkins file get executed so this command will execute so if i go and execute this command also in the jenkins server directly so this command also getting executed on the jenkins machine so why i should always go to the dashboard execute job because there the job failure will be increasing right unnecessary job fails will be visible so instead of that what we were doing i was do so i'll execute the same command on the jenkins server okay so we don't see job counts build numbers over there so it will be easy we can save lot of time once everything is successful whatever we are trying to achieve the application is running fine and it's coming online successfully then i'll go and configure job in the jenkins so in future whenever we want to deploy we'll execute that job but till that time for the first time we are configuring it might fail lot of dependencies lot of problems we might face so oh, i don't want to go to the jenkins always dashboard and execute the job and it will show red color ball keep on increasing the number instead of that i can execute from the shell itself shell of jenkins server understood right so now i don't want to uh, go to the jenkins um, dashboard i log into the jenkins server from there i'll execute manually this command which one this one only right so whenever it is getting cloned as we said uh, so in this location with the job name it is cloning right so i'll go to this path what i'll do i'll edit that file hp hyphen mem dot yaml file i'll copy the content of uh, cpu utilization related thing then i'll execute helm command so before that i'll delete kubectl yet not from here Hmm. So in the Jenkins Helm list. So this is the pet clinic which we deployed yesterday through the Jenkins dashboard. Okay, which got deployed August 19. So what I'm going to do? Helm delete pet clinic iPhone app iPhone iPhone purge. I'm deleting it. Hmm. 
and if you see pet clinic is terminating and uh, let me delete pubctl uh, get pods I'm deleting remaining deployments. Why? Because uh, we should have enough uh, resources because we have only two CPUs, right, for our worker nodes. So if other containers are taking the CPUs, then uh, our testing will fail. So I'm deleting remaining deployments. Okay. So if you don't want to delete, okay then what you can do you can scale down means you can put uh, replicas zero for the deployment so it will be uh, make it as a zero again when you want to uh, power on them then again you can make it as a replica is one like uh, i forgot the exact command cube cpl uh, scale deployment iphone iphone deployment uh, name iphone iphone replicas equal to zero okay okay it's done now if i check qc tell get uh, deployment if you see here zero zero means we are saving our resources when we need again i can make it on i don't want to delete that nfs client provision in case if you don't want to delete specific deployment so you can make it as a zero then the whatever the cpus was allocated that will be released because there is no pod is running for this as of now no pods are running because we made it as a zero so we have full resources now okay if you don't want to delete this way you can use this is also a very important command in real time this will help you someone will ask you how to restart a pod how you will restart a pod there is no command to restart a pod this way only we can restart when you make it a zero no pods will be there again when you make it as a like two or three then the pods will be get created so that's how you can restart the pod okay we don't have any such command to restart a pod so that that inside that application gets restarted okay so this way we can do it so now how to see the resources of each worker node means i have two worker nodes now kubectl get nodes i want to know how much resources are available inside these machines so for that you can check kubectl describe node and the node name this is the name So if you see here, only one pod is running 250 MB, 250 millicore CPUs. That's it. Remaining everything is free. Okay. Means lot of CPU is available here. Total CPUs is two. Among them, only one pod is running, which is taking only 250 millicore CPU. Okay. And the same thing you can check for another node also this one cube ctl describe pod sorry it's not pod it's node for this also same okay only less resources are available less resources are consuming so i can deploy the applications so now as i said i am not executing the job from the jenkins dashboard i log into the jenkins cli from there i'll execute the same helm upgrade command okay manually i'm executing that command instead of job why because here um, inside this go to the workspace 
I can see uh, this one pet clinic CD means deployment CT So here I can see this information if you remember the same helm chart this one per CD job pet clinic and uh, helm director this jenkins file to execute this one so that this is the helm chart right this helm chart is cloned here so if you remember this yesterday i was talking this pet clinic is basically available inside the helm but uh, due to this job this command it copied one step back so that's why it, this chart is available here if you see under the helm you can see pet clinic that was copied one step back that's why we can see here so that we can execute this command like uh, this command directly okay so that's the purpose this command has been added so this is the chart name and this is a release name this one so now what i want to do i will go here and uh, templates this one petlinic hyphen mem i will rename it uh, instead of mem i'll rename it to cpu dot yaml okay and uh, i'll edit this inside this everything is same only thing is um, target cp utilization percentage this i need to add remaining it looks same if you see replicas and uh, the name here uh, i can make it as an cpu the name and uh, this one is five replicas max one is minimum and uh, that is also same scale target reference extensions version 1 beta and kind of deployment this is reference and here only we can see target cp utilization 50 and here we can see this i will remove all these lines okay from matrix and uh, here exactly it is available here you see here it's exactly in this line okay so we need to check otherwise again it will give error if it is in the wrong entry in the spec field here it is available so these are child uh, fields of this scale target reference so i am configuring for 50 percent means whenever there is 50 percent cp utilization it should create new part so this is i configured okay so now i can execute this command this one same image i'm taking i'm not taking any new image the image which we created uh, day before yesterday with ci job the same image tag number also same we are taking so now helm list if you see there is no pet clinic is available now paste it We are in that directory only, right? Oh, sorry. I am not in that present working directory. Okay, so here I should be here. Where are the pet clinic directories there? So that's why it is telling it's couldn't able to find pet clinic uh, helm chart. Okay, so this is a helm chart. Now again I will execute. It's got deployed the same output we can see in the jenkins dashboard in the console output and here we are seeing the same output okay so it's a release name and deployed 
everything now you go to the kubectl get pods it's created kubectl top pods matrix not available means it's initializing right so it's not yet available now if you see 253 millicore it is taking and 223 mb of ram it is taking Okay. Now, D for slow, it's it will slow down. Okay, only at the initial time it will take, but uh, then it see now it's two millicore, it's reduced. So initialization time, the Java application will take little bit high resources, then it will come down okay so now i need to do some fake load on this one where is that this one so i am going to install this package in the cube master in the master server and i am going to execute this one so let me install this package as i said this can be installed in other linux machine also which in the same network But I don't want to create another machine for this. So that's why I'm using the master. But if you are using uh, GKE case, then you should use some other machine. Already you might have some test machines in your organization in that network, right? So you can use that. So siege command. So siege is already installed, so that's why it is not installing. So for you, it will install that package. Okay. So now this is HTTP and IP and port number. So if you see kubectl get SVC, this is a Petlinic uh, load balancer, but we will access with the node IP only, right? kubectl get uh, not here the public IP. What is the public IP? This is the one. Three two seven five zero. It's accessible, right? So copy this URL and what is telling this is the command. See here the Q means quiet mode, concurrent and uh, time period. Okay, two minutes time period. And here we'll go and give the URL. It will send traffic to this URL. Means it's sending traffic to like if someone is accessing your website, it's coming traffic, right? So it is going to send some fake load to your URL. That's it. It means real traffic. It's like real traffic is coming to you okay and i'll open another session before this and before that i would like to show one more thing sudo is uniform so kubectl get all kubectl get hpa we deployed we created hpa object also right so to see that how we are seeing pods services same way we can see hp also this is hpa got created and you can see this is as of now zero percent utilization and uh, minimum pods one and minimum replicas one and maximum it can go up to five okay so now you can see the describe also kubectl describe hpa any resource you can able to describe to view the information and you can ignore these two okay uh, invalid matters why because when it gets initialization at the time it cannot able to connect to the matrix server that's why you will get this error after that 
you can able to see even when I was checking the metrics it was not showing where at the time of pod has been creating it will take some time so during that time you'll get this error so you can ignore it okay now I'm going to execute this command so here what I'm going to do cube CTL top pots we can see the load will increase see now now if you see here 88 percent it's reached now it should create two now if you see here two previously it was one so if you see the pots Where is the part? Why another part is not get created? Immediately it should create. Yep, it created. Okay, cube CTL get pots. See, it's created now. Two pots are running. Get pots, and if you see HPA in HP, also you can see, and uh, get pots, also you can see. This is the information. Okay. So now when the load is normal, immediately it will not delete. Okay. The cooling period time will be there. Five minutes. After five minutes only it will get deleted. So right now the load is normal now. But it doesn't mean that immediately it will delete. Like how it got created the same way it will not get deleted it will take time that is called cooling period so it will wait for five minutes and then it gets deleted so we need to wait okay after five minutes only it get deleted so as of now it's only completed two minutes because it might receive some traffic all the traffic should be completed and it should transfer to another part then only it can able to delete so that's why it's having the cooling period Okay, in the last session we were discussing about uh, horizontal pod auto scaler. So horizontal pod auto scaler we can do in two ways. One is for CPU and one is for memory. Whenever there is a huge CPU, we can create automatically the pods. And whenever there is a huge memory, then the pods gets created. So in the last session we discussed uh, and practiced about how pods get created automatically whenever there is an Huge CPU for a pod. So today we'll see about uh, memory, and then we'll see about uh, ELK. Okay, uh, EFK, Elastic Search Flow Indian Kibana. So let me power on this machine. So for that, I will log into this Jenkins server. So here I log in as a Jenkins user account. And if you remember, I went to um, 
the helm chart i did not configure any job for this one from here directly if you see helm list i okay i think master yet not yet ready i think so okay it's telling teller is not ready so if you see here um, inside this i went to workspace directory and here the job pet clinic cd job and uh, inside this we have an elm chat if you see inside this pet clinic elm chat under the templates directory i configured this one so now i'll remove this file and uh, i'll create a new file and inside that i'll put the belongings of memory related stuff okay so let me go to my repository this is the one memory hpa and uh, this is a file i need to copy inside the helm chart so i'll remove this file and i'll create a new file petlinic mem.yaml file and inside this We copy this stuff so here max replicas 5 minimum replicas 1 same and uh, this horizontal pod autoscaler we are conferring for this specific deployment so this is the deployment name to whichever deployment you are providing this one and this is an uh, type resource type is memory and here whenever the memory utilization is 50 percent then it will trigger a new pod okay this is up to us it can give 60 70 80 90 in our organization whatever the uh, average utilization the application users will ask based on that we can configure it now i'm going to save this one okay so now let me log into the cluster and see in the meantime let me see it is up yes now if i check helm list if you see this is the deployment i have done on the uh, friday i think so friday or thursday okay now So then, now if you see this is a part why it is running three okay so this is a deployment okay on that day it got created so i think so afterwards it did not get deleted give detail so now i again i'm going to delete this deployment and i'll deploy with the new configuration because i have changed with the memory hps so again we need to deploy it so for that i am going to delete this deployment so helm list in the jenkins server helm delete
now there is no deployment and here also we can see this will get deleted once it is done again i'll redeploy it so that now it will deploy it with the memory hpi okay done it got deleted go to my jenkins server and the previous command which i used uh, helm uh, okay this is the command which i used helm upgrade if and install and this is a uh, release name and this is a helm chart name and i should be inside the directory so let me come out of the directory yes right now i'm inside this directory and this is the image from where the image should be pulled okay so now let me execute it deployed now if i come to the cluster and see it's created and if you see kubectl get hpa here we can see petronic hyphen memory hyphen hpa if you have enough resources then i could have deployed both cpu i could have placed the cpu also in the same helm chart both in real time we'll mention both the yaml files in the helm chart but as of now our workers doesn't have sufficient uh, resources so what happens whenever we have only one cpu left in each machine so whenever the pod uh, creates so by default it will rise up to almost one cpu but as per threshold immediately it will create a new pod right so that's the reason i did not include a cpu inside this if we have enough resources enough cpus and ram then we need to delete the cpu related file so we can have the cpu related file and uh, we can have this uh, memory also both the files in the helm charts we need to put both the files in the helm charts in real time but as of now due to uh, insufficient resources i deleted that and again i'm using with this memory okay and uh, now if you see by default 21 percent it is using kubectl to 19 mba of ram it is using by default okay so now what we need to do we need to test it so how to test it again we need to use some commands so install stress package inside the application pod so last time we installed siege package in one of the linux machine from there we sent some http traffic to our url now this time inside the application pod we need to install stress and we need to execute this command okay so stress command will increase eat up the memory so that it will use maximum memory then it will um, trigger a new pod so let me log into the pod so i hope you know how to log into the pod kubectl get pods take the pod name kubectl and by default uh, this will be debian machines right or ubuntu based upon that you need to use the command to install the package it's a debian linux okay why because we were using open jdk as a base image inside the docker file so open jdk how it got created they used when we are using open jdk from the docker hub so they created that open jdk from debian so that's why we can see debian so now first use apt get if you are using some other application okay and if you are using some other base image 
then you should use uh, whatever the image you are using then based on that you need to use if it is CentOS, then use m install or if it is some for example alphine is there that is different uh, command it will use alphine okay not uh, debian not uh, aptgate or m install alphine will use some other command to install packages okay so that way based upon the os you need to use it aptgate update and aptgate install stress Okay, stress command is installed. One newly package is installed, and then install this command. And uh, before that, let me open another session of this one so that we can monitor the CPU uh, memory usage. Okay. Now if you see 417 MB, Now 662 MB. And now you can see 64%. The memory utilization. It is 50% actually. The we configure the threshold. And it is now 64%. And now you can see replicas 2 because of this one. Now we can see in the get parts. So now second one has been created. Okay. So if you see the still resources now it is reduced because the command I think it's been terminated it is reduced so here 500 MB of RAM we are utilizing okay in one single go so we have uh, we can we provided 1 GB of RAM right so that is why we provided 50 uh, 500 MB so that it can use up to 50 uh, percent so based upon how much resources we are allocating based on that we can provide if you are using some other different application and overall uh, memory itself we are providing that application maybe 500 mb or 250 mb something like that then you can change this value according to that okay i provided 1 gb of ram for this application that's why here i'm providing 500 mb so it will eat up 500 mb of ram okay now it is reduced but as i said based upon the cooling period five minutes it will delete the Part. it will take time immediately it will not delete like how it got created immediately the same way it will not get created or deleted it will take cooling period time five minutes then only it will get deleted so we can see get hpa right if you see describe hpa describe hpa and this is a name you can see this transactions whatever is happened now okay uh this one new size reason memory resource utilization percentage of request okay about target so that's why it created new part okay as i said you can ignore this one because whenever it's initialization time it will get an error because at the time hpa will not get ready to get the details of because whenever the um, metric server is collecting the information it will take time to connect with this hpa during that time you will get this error we can ignore this after that again after it the pod get deleted it will update here okay the new size one okay and again it will tell the reason why it is one size because it is a uh, utilization is normal the memory utilization will be normal so in the describe command you can check this one okay So now two current two 
max phi but basically we configure one replica so this is how we configure uh, horizontal pod auto scaler even there is an option for vertical also vertical means what providing resources to the existing pod itself but mostly that will be not used 95 percent we use this option only auto scaling whenever it's when we use a vertical scaling if your application is not supported multiple replicas means see uh, I, um, there will be application some application will be sticky sessions will be there okay means um, whenever a user let's say i'm buying something inside the flip cart i purchased i mean i selected something and it is into the cart and uh, again i went back to the main page and again i'm trying to buy some other thing so back end flip cart might have multiple servers so whenever i uh, selected one item first it went to one server and it provided that information stored there again if i am going to buy second item and that request goes to second server how come second servers knows that i already have an item in my list okay so there will be a concept called sticky sessions okay so that con based on that concept only the sessions will be configured okay all these items will be even though was placed in a centralized way that is a huge concept so if that that is not supported by your application so what you need to do if it is generating a new session for every connection then it will be a problem so those kind of scenarios you cannot have multiple pods right only single pod only should be available then that pod resources should be increased whenever there is a huge load if load is high on that particular pod then it should be increased with the resources in that scenario you can configure vertical scaling but that will be very very rare scenario mostly we'll get opportunity to configure high availability okay fault tolerance for our application so we can use horizontal pod auto scaler itself okay so now we'll see ef elastic search fluentd and uh, kibana so when we initially first time for example in our organization we started using uh, kubernetes for our applications the first step is build the cluster whether you are building it in uh, cloud if you are if your customer or if your project is already is in cloud then they'll recommend any of the cloud or initially for testing purpose you might start with on bare metal like creating virtual machine installing with kubedm that up, up to your project so once you deploy your application you will first initially create uh, files jenkins files helm, helm charts all these things you'll configure jobs will deploy once you see everything is getting deployed then next requirement will be logs so you want to see the logs how you are going to see the logs so application logs you want to see because once you deployed you cannot give access to your cluster to execute this kubectl commands to the application users they don't know about this how they will use these commands right they don't want to go to cd var log something like that because if it is a virtual machine there will be some path will be there they'll go to that location for example if this is a virtual machine virtual machine means application team will configure the logs to some location so they we can give we can create a user account and we'll provide access to access the log file or they will have their own uh, application file system itself see whenever application team is working on their application apart from os related file systems We'll create separate file system in the Linux operating system for application guys. For that file system, we'll give full access to them because the user group will be the their. For example, if it is an Apache, Apache Apache username uh, and group name will be there to that file system, so that they can do anything to that file system, right? So they can go to their 
log file also and see that is okay but here is it is a pods concept right to log into the pod you should have kubernetes knowledge and we should not give access to that cluster also so instead of that we can provide some centralized location where they can see the logs easily right so to see that first of all your application logs should be configured in a such a way for there are two types of logs they can configure means um, one is if they configure the log as in standard output standard output means what whatever the logs it is generating it is not redirecting to any, any file it is just giving the output like whenever we execute any commands we'll just give the standard output to redirect to a file right or else it will display on the screen itself on the console itself the so same way standard output means what it will display immediately whenever the application executes it will display the logs also there itself okay or else application will configure to redirect to some file so that we'll go to that file and we'll open the logs that way it will happen okay so now if in case your application is configured with standard output as a log option then if you see for example kubectl get pods now kubectl uh, sorry kubectl uh, logs and the pod name if you mention this way you can see here with this command if your application is not configured with standard output then you cannot see any logs with the kubectl logs command because it is available in the log file kubectl logs command will not go and read the log file it is only giving the information from the console output okay now if you see started application now for example okay i access this right so now again i'll try it last line was started petlink application this is the last line now if you see completed initialization in 19 millisecond someone access this okay so that's why this is showing the information so it is giving the logs to a standard output so that's why when i type kubectl logs command we can able to see okay but sometimes the application will be mostly the application in real time will not be configured as a standard output uh, they will be redirected to a log file okay but i will show you if ef can be configured so what it will do it will uh, collect this all the logs information and it will send it to the elastic search i will show you with the diagram okay how it will be mm. this image will be perfect okay so we have a concept called elastic search fluent d and uh, kibana so what is elastic search elastic search is like a database which will collect all the information which will store the information this is called storage and so the storage it will store all the information so who is sending that information fluent is sending the information so this is one worker node and this is one worker node here example some wildfly uh, application is running and here java application is running okay some applications are running inside this one so now whatever the application log files will be there that will be captured by this fluent and this fluent is responsibility to send that information to elastic search so this fluent will be available in each and every worker node 
so that it can whatever the 10 parts are there 20 parts are there whatever the parts are there it will collect the information and that information it will store inside this elastic search so elastic search is going to uh, have the volumes because uh, it is storing the data you need log files of one week or 10 days it's up to your application owners how long they want the log files even in our organization also if you take our virtual machines concept log rotate concept will be there based upon the application team request we will configure log rotate so that for how long we need logs so that after one week logs can be deleted okay so same way here also for how long we want so we need a volume compulsory because if this pod gets deleted then if there is no data we need yesterday's logs or day before yesterday's logs so that's why here it is contains a volume we already discussed about volumes and uh, it will store the data inside these volumes okay and kibana is the visualization okay it will collect the fetch the data from this elastic search and it will give you a visualization data analysis okay how you can how you can uh, see the logs in a visual way that will provide you the dashboard we can call it as a dashboard in the kibana dashboard we will provide that url to the application users so they will check their logs inside that kibana dashboard okay so now we will see how we can deploy so these three components we can deploy it with an helm chart we can have or else you have yaml files for each individual uh, um, resources then you can configure it so this will get deployed inside the kubernetes cluster okay so elasticsearch kibana and fluentd as a pods will get deployed so now as i said if it is an standard output for example you have three pods inside this worker node and these three pods applications are configured with standard output then you no need to configure anything extra automatically fluentd will capture that information and it will send it but if there is a no standard output configured for your application if it is redirected to some uh, what we say log file then fluentd how come fluentd knows that there is a log file location and should go there and should pick up so in that scenario we have a concept called a sidecar we call it as a sidecar container okay so here hmm, i don't know where i mentioned that sidecar details okay so here i separate configured uh, mentioned this petlinic.yaml file under the kubernetes repository to show you the same deployment previously how we deployed our application the same deployment but in case for example if the petlinic application is not configured with standard output the log file if they configured insert some any path let's say var log then if you see in the specifications containers so this is my application container we are telling this is the name of the container and this is the image location and this is the tag it need to use image pool policy means we can use if not present or always also means if already present it will not pull from the docker up if always means always it try to pull from the docker up okay and what is the inside application port is configured in the application level that we are configuring here okay till here and again if you see in the same column name is there count log one means another container this image is busy box and arguments if you see in the arguments this is the tail command iphone n plus one iphone f this is the log file location okay so and this what we are doing so inside this container we are mounting our pods 
var lock to this particular container and then it is doing tail off tail off means what whenever we are doing tail off it's like a console output only right so for example cd var log tail off hyphen messages what will happen it will give me the continuous output here if the logs are generating so it will give me the output if you see this is the message right now so maybe see now this is a message one more thing i got like this whatever the output we are getting so the tail of command what it is doing it is giving the live messages okay continuously so here also what we are doing the pod wherever the pod uh, application log is there okay this this content application log is there that location we are mounting into this container and we are doing tail of command to that log file so when you are doing tail f so automatically it is like a console output standard output only then what will do the fluent will collect that information and it will send it to the uh, where elastic search okay so when i was configuring because i got opportunity to in my organization in my project to confirm from scratch i started creating everything from bare metal to aks cluster gk everything so when i got uh, this stage to configure initially i was struggling how i need to configure because directly if i install efk it will just only search the standard output logs and it will give in the dashboard so it took time for me by doing lot of research then i got to know okay this way i can get the logs of the pod okay because wherever this container got created so what as i said for application container if they configured log file is a var log some location is there that location we need to mount it here okay in the second part mount path otherwise if you just give tail if and f command it will say the file is not found inside the second part how it knows that there is this this is the file so we are mounting this path of this container so that's why inside this container when you do tail if nf then it's, it's like an nfs share or the, something like that so you can able to get this file and then you are doing the tail f command so that it can able to get the information so it's giving console output that's how they were fluent is collecting the picking up the information and sending the to the elastic search this is a cluster and uh, these are the nodes see elastic search if this is an elastic search and this is uh, fluent will be available by default in all the worker nodes because it need to collect information from all the worker nodes right so how many worker nodes are there in all the worker nodes fluent will be there compulsory and uh, elastic search again it depends upon um, how many replicas you configured if i configure two replicas assume this will be on deployed on the two machines so it will be so mostly we need to provide two or three compulsory because there will be no high availability right if you don't provide more than two more than one so minimum if you are providing two then it will be deployed in two worker nodes and assume if you have only one kibana dashboard and that will be this one means if you configured only one replica for this this way it's not mandatory it will be available here it can be available here or here okay so and inside this application pods will be there now assume these are the application pods okay so in this pod two containers will be there so we have one container and another one is the um, side we call this as a sidecar okay so you can just go and uh, 
do that also sidecar container uh pravin sidecar uh, yep which single container can't we achieve this sorry only app container hmm uh, can we achieve uh, logging by consumer as well i mean no, having one spot with per... sidecar only okay with sidecar only it will be possible or okay. else there is another option see there is multiple options will be there there will be another option will be there okay uh, if you have only single uh, what we say single file location means if your application in the pod only have one file per log then no need of sidecar container there is another option the standard output you can uh, redirect uh, you know right in the linux we have a link file okay yes. we can do soft link hard link so that file you can redirect to the standard output okay in uh, slash dev there is an option uh, okay this way so for standard output if we link the file then what will happen that logs will be redirected to this standard output and it will give display over here you no need to configure um, sidecar in that application pod itself you can uh, create a link file so that it will be redirected that will be you can configure inside the configuration here here itself same way how we are using command here arguments in this container we can provide a argument command here and we can do link to ln iphone yes and uh, the log file location and to the slash do slash uh, standard output std out then logs will be redirected if you have more than one log file then that is not possible so then we need to use this concept but recommended is this is the uh, best recommendation even though if you have single log file also the standard output because if huge logs are getting generated then you are very uh, quickly the logs are getting generated then better to use this concept instead of uh, linking that log file to standard output okay yes good so here we need to deploy this as i said this says uh, we need to give replicas and here if you see we are using the deployment ip here is state full set for this one elastic search and for this one is daemon set and this one is deployment i hope you all remember this deployment types we discussed stateful set daemon set replica set keep, uh, deployment okay so for applications we, we use this type deployment because we have multiple options right and uh, daemon set uh, what is the daemon set what is the purpose of daemon set we used for deploying applications or anything uh, pod in every node exactly so pod we get deployed on every node okay so that is the purpose of daemon set here we don't give any replicas okay so its responsibility is to go and deploy and even though if the new worker node is gets created maybe due to heavy load right now we discussed the horizontal pod auto scaler so when it gets auto scale if pods having sufficient resources on any of the worker node then only it will get created but if the pod doesn't find any resources in the worker nodes then pod will be in the pending state it will not get created because it will tell insufficient resources then how this virtual machines also should get created automatically so in the aks or gke or eks we have an option called auto scaling option we need to configure it in azure we call it as a virtual machine scale set in aws we call it as an auto scaling in gke also we call it as an auto scaling so we need to configure at the time of creating cluster we will get that option to auto scale so that features also that uh, values also we need to provide maximum how many up to what number it can grow 
so whenever there is insufficient resources then these virtual machines also will get created automatically and whatever the pod was showing in the pending state that will go and deploy on this machine so this everything should be automated okay if you are using a cloud uh, native kubernetes cluster so when this machine is created then this fluentd also should be get created automatically over here we should not manually do that right because we are not aware when automatically got this got created and when application pods got deployed so daemon said what will do automatically fluentd will go and deploy into the new worker node so it will check the fluentd will check this is a new worker node has been added into the cluster and it will validate whether fluentd is available or not if it is not available it will go and deploy automatically so that's the purpose of daemon set so it's responsibility to available in each and every worker node and when this got deleted this machine got deleted then this fluentd will be always obviously it got deleted okay so that's why we use daemon set and stateful set as i said here elastic search is going to have a concept something like master slave concept because by default as per elastic search configuration file they'll provide three replicas okay three will be created so three means one will be like master remaining will be like slaves means <coughs> fluentd is going to will not send to all it will send it to one master okay so one will act like a master remaining will act like a slave so to understand this concept between them those three pods so stateful set will do the justification because stateful set as i said it will not deploy all the pods at a time it will deploy one by one first one will be created after created of first one everything is up then only second one will get created after second one is completely up then third one will get created okay in the concept of daemon set or deployment or maybe in the replica set the pods if you mention three all the three will go and deploy at a time parallelly but in state will set one by one so for master slave configuration it required that concept one by one not all together at a time that is the one reason and if you are using volumes for your application the recommendation is elastic search okay so here for elastic search we use volumes so that's why it is configured it is it should be deployed with the stateful set okay so if you see um, even in the default helm chart in the native uh, uh, helm charts if you see even it is helm chart so you can just go efk helm chart Hmm. Where is the default one? Some other persons also will place by doing some modification. See again by default here, this EFK Helm chart inside this default uh, stable Helm chart location will be available with the. Uh, Uh, MDDR volume, but in real time we don't use that one. So wherever you are using, you should use if it is in a cluster means AKS cluster. You should create some Azure storage, and that Azure storage you need to create as a persistent volume and then you can create a persistent volume claim and then you can give it to the elastic search so that the data will be available if you are using mpdr means what if the pod gets deleted the data will also get deleted for testing stage initially you can use mpdr you see here uh, this is not default helm chart this is some person is having his own helm chart by doing some modification inside that if you go to the elastic search and these are templates and this values.yml this helm chart and uh, here we don't see much files mm. 
EFK Helm chat stable repo. Stable. This is a default uh, location of uh, Kubernetes Helm charts. So here we can search. Okay, here we can see these many uh, Helm um, YAML files, but we don't need these many YAML files to configure. Okay. So, but still, we can see this is a stateful set. This is a master stateful set, and a uh, lot of other files are also available. We don't need this one. So, what I have done, I have my own uh, location here. Where is my location? This is my this is my repository, and here, if we see. EFK repo to go inside this these are the helm charts Okay, so now here if you see this is a stateful set and This is a fluently daemon set and this is Kibana deployment. These are three deployments and for this for elastic search one service is there and uh, For fluent there is no service and for Kibana there is service why because elastic search why it is having service because Fluentd will go and talk to the elastic search fluentd collecting the information from the worker nodes and And it should send the Data to elastic search. So how it will communicate to the elastic search. It should configure with some service So internally itself, right? So internally it's communicating So we don't need to configure load balancer or node port. We can configure with the cluster IP So that it can communicate what are the name has been provided in the cluster IP that name can be configured in the fluentd configuration so that it will send the logs to the Elastic search and why we have service to the Kibana because Kibana dashboard you are accessing from the external world So obviously if you see yes ESF and service is configured with cluster IP here. It did not mention any Node port or load balancer means by default. It's a cluster IP and if you see Kibana service, it's a load balancer Okay, because this should be accessed from the external world You are, because application guys will access in the browser this Kibana dashboard so Whatever the IP it will provide it will access from the external world and uh, this is the service if you see stateful set and this is a, and by default it is expecting the stateful set this elastic search is expecting like uh, how tiller was expecting some roles in the cluster so this is a service account this is a cluster role cluster role binding so actually in the same file it is available all this configuration and by default what are they are providing uh, where is that here here they have individual files for this one if you see role binding role and uh, cluster for that individual files are available but we can have all together in a single file also so service account this is one kind and cluster role and uh, this is cluster role binding these are the three so that elastic search is having authority to contact the cluster and getting the information the log files so it's like providing permissions and these are the four uh, Objects are getting created and then from here exact deployment is happening if you see elastic search deployment itself and kind is stateful set Okay, and from where that image is pulling this is the image location in real time uh, When you are applying this in your organization You should be careful like uh, from where you are picking up the image and always remember all these three should be in sync Make sure that these three images are in compatible with or not if you Choosing the different images for these three then Kibana dashboard when you're trying to access Kibana dashboard It will not give the proper information. So when you are trouble because even I've faced a lot Okay, by accessing the logs 
by in whenever I was configuring this one. So because I was using that some different images. So given a dashboard can able to access, but it is not able to provide me the logs information properly. I'm getting errors. So then I realized and by getting the errors, then I Google it and I raised some queries with the forums and then I came to know that the first of all images should be incompatible. What are the images you are using? So that you can find in the Elasticsearch website. Okay. So if you go default Elasticsearch website, they will give the compatibility with this Elasticsearch, which image of FluentD is compatible, which image of Kibana is compatible based on that you can configure. And how much resources again, it's up to your organization, how much of logs uh, it is going to generate based upon that you can configure the load. Okay. And uh, here if you see MDDR volume is getting created for testing purpose. It is okay for showing you demo. It is okay. But in real time for you, you need to create a persistent volume because at least this data should be available for one week. If if I delete the pod now, then data will also will be erased. Then how can you get yesterday's data? Logs are important. So if logs has been erased, then it will be a problem. So that's why make sure that you can use persistent volume. Okay. So this is elastic search and uh, and Elasticsearch, I have given actually two uh, replicas, but actually we need to provide three because it expects some uh, resources. So that's why I deleted from three to two. If you have enough resources, better to give three replicas for Elasticsearch in real time. And FluentD, and for FluentD, there is a config map. So why config map for fluent because when you are opening in the dashboard how you want to view the logs okay that will be defined inside the fluent config map so here if you see pattern like how it should be captured what it should be captured how we can see these are all the patterns so this will be defined inside the fluent config map file so based upon this the format the log file format will be displayed on the Kibana dashboard If you want to do any modifications, you should do modification inside the config map file so that the output will be in that way Okay, so how it should be And this is a fluent deployment and if you see here here also same uh, for because it's going into the worker node and it is Taking the information right so it should have permission. So that's why this roles and service account is getting created and this is a deployment of application and kind if you see Daemon set and you don't see any Replicas over here because for daemon set we don't give replicas. It will not work Automatically it's responsibility to go and deploy Okay, and uh, This one kibana deployment so this is kind of deployment. This is our deployment type Okay, and replicas one if you want you can give two but we can have one In production we can use two or three Okay, so here this name How it is this is the name of the elastic search iPhone logging Value always remember whatever the this is a elastic search service, right? What is the name of this service elastic search iPhone logging? So this name and the port number is for elastic search 9200 So Kibana from where it should get the logs means the data from elastic search So how elastic search it is communicating? So whatever the name is there that with that name? The cluster IP is getting created the cluster uh, service So if you see in the Kibana Sorry in the deployment You see this is a Service name elastic search iPhone logging when I deploy I will show you it will deploy with this name So it will connect to the elastic search. So here you need to give the value in case if you are changing the name of the Service for elastic search then make sure that change should be also available here also Okay and also in the config maps of fluentd because fluentd is sending the logs information to Elasticsearch by using the service name, 
but if you are changing the service name then it cannot communicate somewhere it will be available let me filter it see here mm -hmm. last is such Elastic search. If you see here, host Elastic search hyphen login and port 9200. Host means what? When you deploy Elastic search, the service also gets created and service name will be Elastic search hyphen login. So Fluentia also connecting to this and sending the logs to this port. Okay. So if you are changing the name of this Elastic search, then make sure that change in these two locations or otherwise your fluent and kibana will not communicate and this is the kibana service yaml file okay so i'll deploy tomorrow and i'll show you how to deploy and how to check the logs any doubts Okay, then we'll meet tomorrow. Thank you guys. Thanks everyone. Uh, Praveen, Praveen. Yep. Praveen, I have a doubt. It's, it's not related to this one. It's related to a Jenkins, okay? A gentle doubt. Mm -hmm. Can I ask that? Yeah, tell me. If I know, I will tell yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So what I'm doing is actually, uh, so uh, uh, in, in our, you know, like office uh, work, so we are you know like uh, automating something okay so uh, related to, to a, a user access and all so there is a git repository okay we are in we are mm. using jenkins okay so as a service we are using that jenkins and you know like we are pulling that git repo okay so for that you know mm. like i have uh, uh, created a credentials uh, and uh, using github access token okay so uh, the repository it is cloning okay and in that particular repository, there is a file, okay, which is a go dot mod. Uh, it's a go file. So that go file, what it is okay. doing is it is uh, pulling, okay, it is uh, uh, referencing to some other repository, okay. So when okay. when when I you know like uh, pull that complete thing, okay, uh, what it is telling is uh, so the second repository which that go file is referencing. So it is not able to pull that it is saying uh, credentials are uh, you don't have authentication for that particular repository mm -hmm. you understood right so the main repository repo? yeah the yeah, second yeah. Repo which is trying to connect is it public repo it's or private repo public public we tried in local it worked uh, clearly completely but when we are doing with automating mm. this using jenkins so it is not working from past three four days i'm trying not so it's to not a problem with jenkins i think so the okay. file which you are telling inside that if you mentioned the repos okay ah. so that file problem might be it's but not it won't be in a local right? machine jenkins uh, is figuring uh, local machine how installing jenkins in local machine or uh, uh, normally so when you execute even, uh, that file uh, hmm. yeah no, what I did didn't. So when you are executing that file, hmm. uh, I cloned that repository. Okay, so when I clone that repository, so it is pulling everything and it is running. Hmm. So I'm able to run successfully. But uh, in Jenkins, when we okay. do that, okay, so it is How not able to executing that. that file. Uh, it's a Go file. Okay, so basically, you know, like we have set a Go path. Okay, and uh, in mm. that particular go path, we are uh, cloning this repo. Okay, and after cloning that repository, okay. there is there is uh, a command okay which is called as make depths. Okay, it's a dependency okay. make depths. Uh, it is in make file. Okay, so there is a make file, and when we do make depths mm. in make file, there is a depth section. So that depth section okay. has repositories. <laughs> okay that depth section okay. has uh, other repositories so there you know like uh, we are getting error in that particular step but in local it worked uh, uh, easily when it, it was successful okay we need to check that if you uh, send the screenshots of the jenkins how it is configured then i can okay. get some idea okay how we can configure because 
until unless we log into that we can see uh, we don't know how okay. exactly if i confirm the same thing then i can get immediately idea okay this is how we need to do that apart from that if you want to troubleshoot we need to see how it is configured so if possible just share okay. the screenshot so that i can have a look okay if uh, anything we need to correct it okay okay so can can i you know like share in whatsapp for you is that fine yeah you can share okay bravin okay 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 yep thank you bravin okay guys thank you thanks everyone